Happy Friday, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning. You can call it whatever you want. We're right on the cusp. I was just telling the story of a trip on the A train here, and this gentleman got on with a bongo, set of bongos and a crate, and he just walks through the A train, crowded A train, and he's like, good morning, good morning, good morning, and everybody's got their head down and their buds in, and looking. And I, you know, I don't look at my phone on the train. I don't wear headphones. I like to be aware of what's happening around me. And it was just so profound. And you just had like the best message. And you talk about good messages a lot uh, and promoting them. And it was just hilarious because he was just like, everybody should say good morning. So good morning. Good afternoon. How's everybody? Happy Friday. You're listening to the Entrepreneurial Web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox. Before I introduce my guest today, we're going to start with the message of the day. And it is good morning. No, I'm just kidding. The message of the day pertaining to my guest is that digital engagement often has the end goal of intimate connection. Mm. We'll get your feedback on that later. Mm. Let me just pull up my old friend's information here. Guest today is David Raphael. David Raphael is a growth marketer and the chief strategy officer of Flatiron Collective. He specializes in helping businesses grow rapidly through Facebook and Instagram advertising and hypothesis driven <laughs> experimentation across their market funnels. What? <laughs> He's worked with a wide range of businesses, including WAG, RT, FanDuel, Life360, Spin, Parks, Casino, Abide, Waking Up, and many others. Let's give David. <laughs> A good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, David. How are you doing today? Doing very well. Awesome. Very well. Great. So David and I are like an old relationship that's been recently rekindled. We didn't see each other for quite a while. Um, I actually lived in his parents' house for a little time. I paid rent. <laughs> right, you were, you were as, great. I was a good tenant. But uh, you're by far the youngest person we've had on the show. That doesn't say much. I've had a lot of old, a lot of old guys on here. <laughs> David's from from a new generation, but you you grew up in Brooklyn, yes? I did. I grew up in Park Slope and in Windsor Terrace, Windsor Terrace as yeah. well, um, where that's where we we got to know each other and uh, and like a little like what nineties in in early two thousands. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, that Time was like, fuzzy. But. <laughs> you're not that old. Um, and 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 how how did you feel about it? I've talked to a lot of I've had people on and that you know pretty much everybody so far that's been a guest has been from New York, um, different neighborhoods. But how did you feel about it? Because a lot of these guys grew up in like 1970s and 80s New York, and you weren't around for that. I I, re I remember it. I didn't live here, but I was like I, don't know, I wouldn't live I feel there. Like I was very very lucky, you know. Born, yeah. Born in '89, born on you know grew up on 12th Street, uh, 7th Avenue. Um, kind of felt like Sesame Place, just very. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Well, that was, I mean, that was, that was rebound time, but it was, yeah. there was still some sketchiness happening. I was young enough that I, I probably didn't see it. And by the time yeah. I was fully conscious, it was just, yeah, yeah. It felt very, very peaceful and calm. That's cool. Nice. I mean, that's, that's very fortunate. That's awesome. That's a great environment to, it probably has contributed to your, to your success. And, and where'd you go to school? So I went to school at PS321, 7th uh, Avenue. Of course, yes. Uh, 51, kind of that's the mm -hmm. theater. Yep. Then I went to a school called Bard High School Early yeah. College in the mm -hmm. Lower East Side. Yeah. Um, how, how was that experience? It was cool. They gave us, uh, we had college professors in mm -hmm. high school. Uh, it was, the Gates Foundation funded it. So it was free. And you ended up graduating with an associate's degree. That's amazing. So you could save, you know, like six figures in college. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Um, and, and how did you feel? I mean, you know, historically 321 and 51 for those Park Slopers who are watching uh, has, has been a really renowned school. You know, I, my kids didn't go there, so I don't really, I don't, I'm not, I can't, uh, vouch for the academics, but what did you feel like when, when you were there? Was, that was like when it was hot. That was, I mean, it's it, all, it's all couched nostalgia. So, you know, yeah. when I look back at 321, it, you know, feels like a perfect experience. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like the, those, those situations contributed to leading you, uh, to Bard and like that, that kind of success? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I feel like I kind of lucked out, to be honest. Yeah. Kind of, you know, mm -hmm. 51, you know, middle school in general, you look back, but most people don't really love middle school. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I don't have the fondest memories, but uh, yeah, kind of, I felt <laughs> like I, I, I lucked, into, lucked into high school and it, it feels like everything has been kind of serendipitous, just kind of. Right. Yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah. Um, it's funny, we, on an earlier show, one of the, the first ones we were talking about luck and fortune and describing it as the intersection of preparation and opportunity mm. 
So you had, you had, you know, good preparation in a number of ways that you were, you know, you were born into a family that was able to situate themselves, you know, in a kind of environment like that. And then just your own DNA. So that was like your preparation. And then the opportunity came along for you where you, it's like, Oh, I can go here. I can try this. I can try to put these things together and bam. I think it falls from a sense of safety as well. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's, you can, you can take more risk if you feel Absolutely. like you have a foundation. Absolutely. I feel like, you know, I also had, you know, okay, don't start talking about jujitsu oh, yet. We have a lot. We have a lot. <laughs> I'm going to talk about, talk about parenting for a moment. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah so, so gr- growing up in, in Park Slope, you know, two mothers, mm-hmm. just a very, uh, just a very good. And I mean, I, I couldn't have really asked for more. Just yeah. Very, yeah. very, you know, kind of unconditional love support. I mean, no, I, I agree. I mean, my first, the first time I met you, because you were away in college when, when we moved into your parents' house, uh, I got that sense from you right away. It was just like, this is a very confident, relaxed person who could take risks. And like you, it just was so clear that you had like solid foundation. Um, I think, I mean, I, I remember reading some, I, I, I think having two moms is a big advantage. Um, you know, it's, it's, and I've seen some studies recently, you know, there, there's a lot of debate as to whether or not it's good for children to be raised by mm-hmm. lesbian parents or gay parents. And what's interesting is that it's not accidental in the sense that if, if a gay couple wants to have children, it's a right. very intentional decision. They're very, you know, ready for it. So. It wasn't like the way I had kids. I was like, <laughs> what? You're what? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. So there's a lot of intent behind it and, and you just have to approach it differently than the way, I mean, literally the whole time I've been a parent for 12 years, I've been flying by the seat of my pants and just like winging it. Just like I was saying earlier, it's a good thing I, I studied jazz because you got to just be in the moment and like adjust and like, oh my God, it's been crazy. But it's life as a whole, right? Yeah. Um, but again, that goes, that's a testament to the, to the preparation aspect of fortune. You had that good preparation, just but luck too, right? It's, I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. Like it's, that's what, to me, that's what luck kind of ends up being is like that, that intersection of preparation and opportunity. So the preparation can come in so many different forms, like your own internal DNA, what your family did before to help you set up. And then the opportunity comes along and boom, you take it. And you know, if you've had the right preparation and you, you utilize the opportunity the right way, it's like, voila, it's yeah. luck. I mean, I guess it's not always that way, but that's a good way of describing it. So, yeah. uh, so talk to us about your experience at Bard. Um, what were, what was your main, did they, do they, were they like a specialized kind of school? How schools are no. often? No, not really. I yeah. remember actually, I really wanted to go to Brooklyn Tech. That was yeah. my, mm-hmm. right now I live right across from it. I was right. one question away. It was an 800 point test with a hundred questions. I was eight points below getting in. So Bard was, I was very sad about it at first, but it ended yeah. up being great. Um, Especially, yeah, getting like, finishing high school with an associate yeah we had essentially we just had like really good teachers um you know and they i felt even when i went to college um i felt i felt like i had a, a step up because i yeah. had been already taking those kind right. of that level of course before so yeah. so it, did you study anything in particular there or it was just it was just kind of a general just but like awesome the school. like the, the you know like the great works right all the dead white men all the you know the philosophers <laughs> and that kind of stuff like <laughs> um so yeah i mean nothing nothing in particular, but just the general canon of... And anything that particularly uh, stood out to you as far as business goes that you got from there? Or no, not really? at all. Actually, the funny, right. like, I've, I've never studied, I took, I've never studied marketing right. or business right. at all, so... Yeah, <laughs> all right. So moving on then to your college days, you went to school in Chicago? Yes. What uh, college did you go to? So I went to the University of Chicago. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I was on the, the south side of Chicago. I actually lived um, right next to Obama's uh, old house. Um, and yeah, it was uh, cold. It was cold. <laughs> it was cold. The winters. The no, winters I went to school in there. Buffalo, man. Yeah. It was wretched, especially not being very from similar. I actually think I, I've always felt like Buffalo in the winter and Chicago in the winter mm. are probably very kind of they, similar I think environments. They're on different sides of that, like that Canadian wind that <laughs> comes down. But man, brr, yeah, I, I did my my like three years and got out because it was it was too cold. This is this is as much as I can take here. So. <laughs> Um, and you study political science, correct? Yeah, which was, I mean, again, kind of a catch-all category. Right, right. It was the broadest major I could study. Um, and I could pretty so much really fit. focused. <laughs> yeah, not focused at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, just kind of following what interested me, which, uh, you know, took a bunch of, you know, I took a course on virtual worlds. Mm-hmm. I took a lot of courses in, you know, philosophy and a couple of psychology, some econ, just kind of a, right. it, it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't targeted towards some vocational end. It was just kind of learn to think, I guess. 
That's, that's important. Yeah, that's really important. Very interesting that you ended up in, in the particular field that you did. And, and so uh, you mentioned some digital studies. I mean, that when I was in school, you know, there was one programming course and that was it. I mean, they didn't, it wasn't a thing yet, you know? But I mean, frankly, I've, I've, uh, my, my technical ability in terms of programming, in terms of coding is relatively limited. Right. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, I, I took, I think I've taken probably two computer science courses in, in my entire life. So I didn't so leave. It wasn't, it wasn't even no. that. Yeah. Yeah. Most of it's right. just kind of through trying experience. To, trying to figure you out. It's going to take the whole hour right. to figure out Let's how this, like, this happened. So you finished school in Chicago, but you stayed in Chicago for a little while, right? right? You didn't, I did. Uh, you so, didn't move right back. I didn't. So my, my first job was actually, I worked for Sears and Kmart out in their <laughs> corporate uh, headquarters. Um, and, and it's it's kind of, I mean, it's not sad, actually, because I keep a seeing... A little bit. <laughs> I, mean, I, looked, I looked yesterday and, you know, I think they were closing oh, yeah. the 150 stores left. Mm, retail. Yeah. Boy. And so, yeah, I worked... Um, <laughs> my first job was in was at Kmart in the food and drug department pricing alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um now, oh, Kmart sells alcohol. They they do in in, uh, in Illinois, uh, wow. across the country. They do. My job was to to find the right price for the right uh, skew of alcohol. Well, they don't here. They I mean, sell beer in New York, but that's it. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah, beer and varied by states and yeah, yeah. Whole... Every state's a little different. Yeah, but yeah, no. So it was it was Kmart, and then I started working on the loyalty program mm-hmm. uh, for Sears, which is called Shop Your Way. Um, and yeah, I mean, one of my projects was in fact. It was a store closing project to try to retain, um, you know, members when yeah, their store closed. Sure. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting experience, but ultimately it felt like we were, you know, the, 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 the trajectory was very clear at that point in time. And so there's something Sisyphean about trying to like... For you? Or just, just to, to, to work uh, for a company where you mm-hmm. knew what would happen. Yeah. And there was no way it wouldn't happen. And to try to shift that, it, it felt... Uh, it, it was not necessarily a, a motivating type of uh, right. initiative. Yeah, I can bet. Well, just working for a company like that anyways, maybe for me, I would die inside. <laughs> I, I, I learned a lot that people were... were, were yeah, I'm were, sure it was a learning experience. Yeah, but it's, it's but and it has played out exactly as I thought it would. Yeah. Um, and I still have people there. I had a great boss there who taught me a lot. He still works there. But retail has um, taken such a hard, hard hit. Yeah. Well, we can, we're going to take a break in just a moment, but we can talk about what we're, ta- we've already, we're on fire. We already, I've had four shots of espresso today. That last one really like, <laughs> I was like, whoa, that's the one. Here we go. Yeah. Well, we've been at it for half an hour before the show, the elevator ride, everything. So we'll, we'll pick that up when we get back. We'll talk about what we were talking about in the elevator. You're listening to the entrepreneurial. Well, we'll be back in just a few.